Hello everybody, this is Education Project's second lesson, free, right here on YouTube. Um, my name is Harry Harrison, whatever you want to call me, and I will be your teacher for this lesson about the science chemistry bracket states of matter. This is a beginner lesson, so um, it's aimed at like year seven, year eight, um, and so you, some of you should already know most of this, but we, we're just going to go over it, teach some of the younger people what this is. Now, what we will go through today is what the three states of matter actually are, the distinct properties of each one, and what causes these states of matter to form. So, what are the three states of matter? Could you take a guess? They are solid. So, examples of these are like anything hard, basically. A brick, rock, your iPhone, um, anything really. So, how I measure it is if I put an object onto my palm and it uh, with an open with open fingers so there's um um an open space in between each of my fingers if it is a solid it will not fall through those fingers unless it's obviously smaller than that but it will not fall through those fingers um because liquids and gases liquids they will flow down and through my fingers and gases they will just go everywhere they can go through fingers they'll go up I'll go everywhere. So liquids, um, that an example here is water. Everything like everything you drink basically is liquid. Um, yeah, and gases. Um, so gases are usually clear, so it's kind of hard to spot. But it's usually white gas. Um, it's not usually a distinct full block color. Now moving on to the properties of these states. Now, a solid, the properties of a solid include, um, a solid has fixed volume, solid has fixed shape, solid has high density, solids are heavy, and solids do not flow. Um, now, with the fixed volume, um, this means that the a solid cannot be added to in, in volume or weight, basically. Um, and it can't be taken away from it, from the particles. Um, it has a fixed shape, so it cannot change shape unless you were to break it. Um, it doesn't flow anywhere. Um, sorry for that. Um, solid has a high density. This means that um, it is very compact. There are lots of particles in one place. That makes it heavier, which is the next point. Um, you know, all solids are heavy, whereas, you know, liquids, unless there's a very big amount of it, aren't that very heavy. And solids do not flow, which um, is shown in the particle picture to the right. Um, all those little circle or balls are staying right together. None of them are moving. Liquids. Liquids have a definite volume. Liquid has no definite shape. Liquids get the shape of a the container in which it is kept. Liquid cannot be compressed much. Liquid ca has less density compared to a solid, but um, more density than a gas. And liquid is lighter than a solid, but obviously heavier than a gas. And liquid flows, hence it is called a fluid. Um, so it does have a definite volume. Um, this means you can't add to it um, like, like a solid. Um, and liquid has no definite shape, so liquid particles are not stuck in one place. They are all, um, they can all flow, they can all go wherever they want, making different uh, shapes, or fitting different containers, which is the next one. Um, like, if you put water in a bottle, um, it will... Um, it will shape the container of the bottle, it will go to however much volume is allowed in there, um, whereas if you put like a pen in there for example, it won't fit through the whole thing, it'll just stay as a pen, whereas liquids, they can flow everywhere they want. 
um, liquids cannot be compressed as much, so you can't really, you know, push force down on it as it just escapes. Um, liquid has less density compared to a solid, um, so it's basically lighter than a solid. Um, and liquid flows, hence it is called liquid. As you can see there, there's arrows pointing to where all the all the particles may go. They 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 go crazy. They can go anywhere. Um, yeah. Next is gas. Gas has an indefinite shape. Gas has no fixed volume. Gas gets the shape and volume of con of a container. Gas fills the container completely. Gas has very low density. Because of low density, gases are light, and gas can flow easily, and hence called um, gases or fluids. Um, so gas has an indefinite shape. So whenever you see a kettle and it's steaming from the hot water, um, you can see the steam absolutely bursting out of um, out of the container and that gas can go literally everywhere there's no um, fixed shape where it has to go it doesn't stay in one place um, gas has no fixed volume um, so it can take up many different spaces which makes it lighter for example and um, gas also gets the shape um, and volume of a container such as like the like the liquid however it also gets the volume so that means that it fills up the container to the max, um, unlike liquid where the volume just stays the same. The gas is spread out and can take up the whole container. Um, gas has very low density, um, so it is like, because all the particles are spread out very much, um, it makes it uh, lighter, whereas if they were all compact, it would make it very dense um, and hence be heavier. Right. Causes of the stack states of matter. The force, the first one, force of attraction. The amount of force within the attraction between particles in the different states. That is what the force of attraction means. Um, for example, in solids, the force is very strong between the particles, keeping the particles night, uh, tight knit together, um, and at all times. Liquids, the force still keeps the particles attracted um, enough to stay together, but is not as strong as solids, but um, is also obviously weaker than gas. Oh, so, wait, it's weaker than solids, but stronger than gases. Sorry. Um, and gases, the force is near to nothing or negligible, meaning it's nearly non existent, which is how um, when the, the steam blows out from the kettle, no, no force of attraction is bringing those particles back together, which is what allows them to spread throughout the room, uh, throughout the kitchen, or whatever. Next, space and kinetic energy. The less space between the particles, the heavier and more compact the object is. So solids, there is very little to no space between particles. Um, you can say that you see that on the right. Um, in the solids lines, the the space between the the um, the hyphens or the or just the dashes are very minimal. You can like you can tell that they're there, but that is what's keeping all of them very close and making it a definite shape. Um, liquids more space than solids, but less than gases, as you can see on the right. Um, it's pretty. Um, it's pretty evenly spread, like, it's it's just the middle, you know, it's the Goldilocks. Um, and gases, massive amounts of space between particles, allowing lots of movement, um, and also allowing lots of low density um, and low weight. Um, the more kinetic energy the particles have, the more they move. The less they have, the more stationary they are. So kinetic energy is the energy of moving, um, and in solids, they have very minimal energy um, within each particle, meaning they don't. The particles really don't do not move, um, which is why they stay as a fixed shape. Um, liquids have a great kinetic energy um, than solids, but less than gases. So this means that they do move more than solids, um, but not enough, um, so they can burst out and you know not be a 
not um, fit a container or whatever. Um, and gases have great amounts of energy, leading them to move erratically. So the energy, when the steam bursts out of um, the kettle, the energy and um, the little force of attraction um, allows the gas particles to move around. Um, they can dot around wherever they want with all their kinetic energy and um, yeah, they're basically hyperactive. So we're going to recap this lesson. Um, so we'll go through what we talked about. The states of matter are solids, liquids and gases. Each of these states are defined by their properties. These properties are things like weight, density and fluidity. The, main, the three main causes to the formation of the states. Um, these include the force of attraction, which is how much force is applied to keeping the particles together, space, space between the particles, and kinetic energy, the, the movement energy within each particle of an object. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the channel, like if you found this helpful, and comment that you did. Or dislike it if you didn't find it helpful if and um feedback for our next lessons. Um I'm sorry if I if I um stuttered quite a bit in this in this lesson, this is my first one, so I apologize a bit, but um yeah, thank you very much.